History of Doha Doha is the capital city and most populous city of the state of Qatar. Doha has a population of 900,545 within the city proper. The city is located on the coast of the Persian Gulf in the east of the country. The city presents you. History of Doha, Establishment of Albida. The city of Doha was formed after seceding from another local settlement known as Albida. The earliest documented mention of Albida was made in 1681, by the Carmelite convent, in an account which chronicles several settlements in Qatar. In the record, the ruler and a fort in the confines of Albida are alluded to. Karsten Niebuhr, a European explorer who visited the Arabian Peninsula, created one of the first maps to depict the settlement in 1765 in which he labeled it as gutter. David Seaton, a British political resident in Muscat, wrote the first English record of Albida in 1801. He refers to the town as Bidihan and describes the geography and defensive structures in the area. He stated that the town had recently been settled by the Sudan tribe, al Suwaiti, whom he considered to be pirates. Seaton attempted to bombard the town with his warship, but returned to Muscat upon finding that the waters were too shallow to position his warship within striking distance. In 1820, British surveyor R. H. Colebrook, who visited Albida, remarked on the recent depopulation of the town. The same year, an agreement known as the General Maritime Treaty was signed between the East India Company and the sheikhs of several Persian Gulf settlements, some of which were later known as the Trucial Coast. It acknowledged British authority in the Persian Gulf and sought to end piracy and the slave trade. Bahrain became a party to the treaty, and it was assumed that Qatar, perceived as a dependency of Bahrain by the British, was also a party to it. Qatar, however, was not asked to fly the prescribed trucial flag. As punishment for alleged piracy committed by the inhabitants of Albida and breach of treaty, an East India Company vessel bombarded the town in 1821. They raised the town forcing between 300 and 400 natives to flee and temporarily take shelter on the islands between the Qatar and the Trucial coast. Formation of Doha Doha was founded in the vicinity of Albida sometime during the 1820s. In January 1823, political resident John McLeod visited Albida to meet with the ruler and initial founder of Doha, Buur bin Jubrun who was also the chief of the al tribe. McLeod noted that al was the only substantial trading port in the peninsula during this time. Following the founding of Doha, written records often conflated al and Doha due to the extremely close proximity of the two settlements. Later that year, Lt. Guy and Lt. Brooks mapped and wrote a description of the two settlements. Despite being mapped as two separate entities, they were referred to under the collective name of al Bida in the written description. In 1828, Muhammad bin Kamis, a prominent member of the al Buainain tribe and successor of Buur bin Jubrun as chief of al Bida, was embroiled in controversy. He had murdered a native of Bahrain, prompting the al Khalifa Sheikh to imprison him. In response, the al Buainain tribe revolted, provoking the al Khalifa to destroy the tribe's fort and evict them to Fuwayrat and Aruaz. This incident allowed the al Khalifa additional jurisdiction over the town. With essentially no effective ruler, al Bida and Doha became a sanctuary for pirates and outlaws. In November 1839, an outlaw from Abu Dhabi named Gilata took refuge in al Bida evoking a harsh response from the British. A. H. Knott, a British naval commander, demanded that Salman bin Nasr al Sawadi, chief of the Sudan tribe in al Bida, take Gilata into custody and warned him of consequences in the case of non-compliance. al Sawadi obliged the British request in February 1840 and also arrested the pirate Jazim bin Jabir and his associates. Despite the compliance, 
the British demanded a fine of 300 German krones in compensation for the damages incurred by pirates off the coast of Albida, namely for the piracies committed by Bin Jaber. In February 1841, British naval squadrons arrived in Albida and ordered Al Suwaiti to meet the British demand, threatening consequences if he declined. Al Suwaiti ultimately declined on the basis that he was uninvolved in Bin Jaber's actions. On 26 February, the British fired on Al Bida, striking a fort in several houses. Al Suwaiti then paid the fine in full following threats of further action by the British. Isa bin Tarif, a powerful tribal chief from the Al Bin Ali tribe, moved to Doha in May 1843. He subsequently evicted the ruling Sudan tribe and installed the al Madid and al Khawari tribes in positions of power. Bin Tarif had been loyal to the al Khalifa, however, shortly after the swearing-in of a new ruler in Bahrain, Bin Tarif grew increasingly suspicious of the ruling al Khalifa and switched his allegiance to the deposed ruler of Bahrain, Abdullah bin Khalifa, whom he had previously assisted in deposing of. Bin Tarif died in the Battle of Fuwayrid against the ruling family of Bahrain in 1847. Arrival of Al Thani The Al Thani migrated to Doha from Fuwayrid shortly after Bin Tarif's death in 1847 under the leadership of Muhammad bin Thani. In the preceding years, the Al Thani assumed control of the town. At various times, they swapped allegiances between the two prevailing powers in the area, the Al Khalifa and the Saudis. In 1867, a large number of ships and troops were sent from Bahrain to assault the towns Al Wakra and Doha over a series of disputes. Abu Dhabi joined on Bahrain's behalf due to the conception that Al Wakra served as a refuge for fugitives from Oman. Later that year, the combined forces sacked the two Qatari towns with 2,000 men in what would come to be known as the Qatari Bahraini War. A British record later stated that the towns of Doha and Wakra were, at the end of 1867 temporarily blotted out of existence, the houses being dismantled and the inhabitants deported. The joint Bahraini Abu Dhabi incursion and subsequent Qatari counterattack prompted the British political agent. Colonel Louis Pelly, to impose a settlement in 1868. Pelly's mission to Bahrain and Qatar and the peace treaty that resulted were milestones in Qatar's history. It implicitly recognized the distinctness of Qatar from Bahrain and explicitly acknowledged the position of Mohammed bin Thani as an important representative of the peninsula's tribes. Shortly after the war, the Ottomans took up a rather nominal control of the country constructing a base in Doha, with the acquiescence of Jassim al Thani, who wished to consolidate his control of the area. Prior to this, the town of Doha served as a stronghold for Bedouin fighters who resisted Ottoman rule. By December 1871, Jassim al Thani authorized the Ottomans to send 100 troops and equipment to al -Bida. Disagreement over tribute and interference in internal affairs arose eventually leading to the Battle of al wajba in March 1893. al fort served as the final point of retreat for Ottoman troops. While they were garrisoned in the fort, their corvette fired indiscriminately at the townspeople, killing a number of civilians. The Ottomans eventually surrendered after Jassim al thanis troops cut off the town's water supply. An Ottoman report compiled the same year reported that al Bida and Doha had a combined population of 6,000 inhabitants, jointly referring to both towns by the name of Qatar. Doha was classified as the eastern section of Qatar. The Ottomans held a passive role in Qatar's politics from the 1890s onward until fully relinquishing control during the beginning of the First World War. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please hit like button to support our channel. And subscribe to our channel to see further new video that we will upload every day. Also don't forget to like our Facebook page. The City. Please have a nice day.